In this class, we are going to learn how to develop and build the function locally with the help of this command prompt or terminal option. We will click on this core tools development over here and see how to do the same. So as I told in my previous class, we need to install this Azure functions core tools in our runtime or in the operating system which we are using. So we can make use of the command prompt or the PowerShell in order to install this Azure functions code tool and we can develop the functions code locally. Now we will see what are the prerequisites for the same. We need to have the CLI. We can make use of the Azure CLI PowerShell on the cloud or we can make use of our terminal or the command prompt in our Windows or Linux operating systems. And then we need to install the extensions. So at the time of recording this class, version 4.x is the latest Azure functions code tools available which we can make use in order to build the functions. Now coming to the installation steps, how to install the Azure Functions Core Tools, we can make use of this command that is npm install minus g azure. So this is making use of this npm command. So in order to use the npm commands, you need to have the latest Node.js installed on your computer. Now in order to install the Node.js, you can go for this Node.js over here, go to the download section. Now based on the operating system which you are using, Mac OS, Windows or any Linux operating system, you can select your operating system and download the installable file. So you can click on this and install the Node.js on your computer. Same thing you can verify with your help of command prompt or terminal on your operating system. So let me use over here the PowerShell. Just right click on this. It's not necessary you run as an administrator. I'm running this as an administrator. We can verify once you install what is the latest Node.js version you are using. Currently 20.3.0 is the latest version and this 18.16.0 is the stable version of this. Now once you install this Node.js, let's install the Azure function over here. Let me just exit from here. Suppose if you are not comfortable using the PowerShell, another option is you can make use of this Visual Studio code. Go to the terminal, click on this new terminal. And you can select under which source or directory or the workspace you want to work. I will select randomly this one workspace where I will be working. Here also you can verify what is the node version you are using. It will be same. So you can make use of PowerShell command prompt or the Visual Studio code as well. I will make use of the PowerShell. First thing in our functions development using the CLI is to install the Azure functions core tool. Version 4 is the latest version at the time of recording this class. So by the time you watch this class, version might be upgraded to 5 or 6. So accordingly, the command will be provided over here by Microsoft. Let me just copy this from here. Go to PowerShell and enter. So this is going to take some time in order to install all the resources and the dependencies for Azure Functions Core Tools. So we will pause this class for some time until all the necessary dependencies are installed for this Azure Functions Core Tools and we will resume once all the installations are completed. So once Azure function code tools are installed completely with this npm command, we will get something like this, the message. Now let's go back to the documentation. There are some commands which like the init, start, new, so and so forth things, the commands which we can use in order to develop the functions locally, test, debug and push to the Azure. Now let's see what are the functions available. You can just write func and enter. It will list all the functions available or the commands available. So func start if we use we can launch our function or deploy our function locally so that we can test will run on the port 771 default if you want to explicitly change this then you can make use of this attribute like the hyphen hyphen port and we can mention the port if you use the func new it will create a new function with a template we can make use of the preferred language and the function name template file name so and so forth things and authentication level for your function func init is used in order to create the new functions app in the current folder where you are running those commands and the function logs is used in order to get the logs for your functions app. First of all, let me just navigate where I want to create the functions app. So we can just verify with the help of this PWD. Now it will list the directory where you are currently running. Let me just clear this. In order to create a function app, as we had seen, there is this init command. Let me just copy and you can provide the functions app name with which you want to create the functions app directory. Let me just paste this command over here. The next it will ask to select the run tab. So I will select the node runtime as I'm going to make use of the JavaScript as the language in order to code all the functions within this functions app. It has been successfully created the functions app. So we can verify with the help of Explorer. It has created so many files. There is this func ignore. So we can mention the file names over here, which we want to ignore at the time of publishing this local functions app to the Azure. Also, there is the host.json here. We can mention the configurations related to all the functions within this function app. Local settings of JSON is explicitly for your local development purpose. You can have settings specific to the local computer or the app. 
those are the few files it will create in detail is provided over here what file is for what purpose now if we scroll down we have successfully created the functions app but we have not created the function now let me just scroll down and see what is the code we have to use in order to create the function now we have to create the function with the help of function new it will create a function within your function app which you have created if you want to explicitly mention the trigger based on which it will be triggered or the name of the function you can mention like this or else you can just run this func new and in the prompt it will ask the options let me copy this func new from here let me go to this cli so here under if we give the ls command it will list all the folders which it has created so my functions project is the function app which it has created we need to get into this folder first of all get into this now we'll see what are the folders available so it is having few configuration files now we have to paste here the function new it will ask what will be the trigger for this so i am going to select http trigger like we had seen in the previous module here it will ask for the name if you want to provide the name you can provide i am clicking on enter going with the default name now let me just see the file structure it has created this http trigger folder let me just get into this let me see what end of files it has created so index.json is the main file which will carry our code for the function and functions.json will carry the binding details input output as well as the trigger details like we had seen in our previous module now let me just come out of this let me just clear those now we have created the functions app we have created the function which gets triggered with the http request now how we can test our functions locally is with this command func start let me just copy this and paste it over here click on enter so it is starting our functions it has started our function in the port 7071 as we had seen in the documentation earlier let me just copy this from here open the browser and provide the link over here and click on enter now if i show you the functions code let me just go over to this functions http trigger and let me open this with a notepad or something Here our function will return this message that is what we are seeing this HTTP trigger function executed successfully but name has not been passed. So it is because this function is specifically checking for the name in the query parameter or within the body. If we send the name then it is saying hello the name what we provided and this message. If the name has not been sent this is the generic message it is sending with the status 200. Now let us provide the name in the query parameter. Now with the help of browser we provide the query parameter like this sorry the name is our query parameter we will send bnum and click on enter as you can see we are getting a message hello the name what we sent over here in the query parameter that is name the name is bnum hello bnum and the message like how we have written in the code so this is how we can create a functions app locally how we can create a function within a functions app as well as how we can trigger or test or debug our functions code locally in our computer and the last part remaining is how to deploy our functions app to the azure so if you look at this documentation you need to scroll down towards the end come and come to the section that is published to azure so we need to run this command this is function azure function app publish so before publishing this you have to make sure you have this azure cli installed on your computer if you are on the windows operating system just click on this download latest release of the azure cli it will download then you can log into your azure if you want to get the help just click on the sign in and see how to log in into your azure by using the az login command it will use the username and the password prompt so you can populate the same now let's come back to this deploying files to the azure we need to copy this from here go to the powershell just make sure you are in the right directory that is you should be inside your functions app i am currently outside the functions app that is my functions project let me just get into this functions App. let me just see we have all the necessary files like the function within the folder as well as this host.json package json files now once you are happy just we have to provide the functions app over here so before publishing this functions app to the azure you need to make sure you already have created the functions app in the azure as you can see i am already having one functions app created in the azure portal now if i click on the functions section in this functions app i don't have any functions now we are going to publish this http trigger to this function app that is bl testing 102 click on enter so it is getting the site publishing info then it will publish the functions app now let's wait for a couple of seconds until this application gets fully published to the azure then we'll resume this class Once your local function app gets pushed to the Azure, that is to the BL testing 103 application, we can make use of this URL in order to invoke the functions. 
Now let's verify whether a function has been deployed or not. Let me just click on this function and click on refresh. Here if you see our function is successfully deployed with the help of the PowerShell in our computer. Now we can click on this and you can go to the code and you can just play around with the data. This is in a read only mode because we have made use of the external tool in order to publish and build this function. But the code you can always come to this code plus test and view the details. Now if you want to test you can just click on this copy URL and paste it over here and it will give you the message. Similarly if you want to provide the name something like this and test it will give you the customized message like hello the name what we have passed and the message. So like this we can build the function app as well as the function within it with the help of the terminal locally and we can publish the application to the Azure. In our next class we will learn how to build, test and deploy the function to the Azure portal with the help of Visual Studio Code.